Hi everyone and welcome to the Swiftcase Productivity Podcast. My name's Adam Sykes, the founder of Swiftcase, the professional productivity platform, and today I've got with me Craig McCarthy, Development Manager of Swiftcase. Um, Phil Whitby, developer of Swiftcase. Okay, so today we're going to talk about something that's come up quite a bit recently, yeah. given that we're in the middle of a about a general election. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether we will be by the time this goes out, but uh, and one of the, the sort of key uh, questions or messages that came out of one of the parties' manifestos was this idea of a four-day week or certainly mm -hmm. moving towards a four-day week. So we thought, seeing as that's bang on kind of a productivity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, issue, mm -hmm. uh, we discussed that today. So I don't know who wants to kick off on only working four days. Seeing as today's Friday yeah. and we're, <laughs> yeah. our, we're our fifth day when we're recording. I mean, technically yeah. this isn't work, is it? So we've done a four-day week. Yeah. Um, it's one of the uh, we we have discussed it before, haven't we? And it is one of those where there's pros and cons. I mean, I think um, I can understand why people instantly dismiss it, especially if they're not if they're not really aware of certain movements that are happening and expectations in in more modern businesses now, where the likes of flexible working and um, and yet shortened weeks, but obviously still getting paid the, the same amount, mm. um, is is the norm. And I think you could easily dismiss it and go, okay, yeah, well, the hell, you're not going to get as much done if you do that. Back in my day, we used to yeah, work yeah. six days or something <laughs> like that. Um, but I think it's quite a dangerous way of thinking about it, really, especially with everything surrounding mental health mm. and uh, the kind of the strides I think that the world as a whole is making in terms of you know awareness for um, mental health. So I think it definitely alleviates. A bit of that because I think sometimes especially in in a world where we're surrounded by work all the time because mm -hmm. with phones yeah, and stuff like that yeah. the expectations have shifted probably mm -hmm. in the past 10 years or so which we'll get on to surely yeah. but um, yeah it's a lot easier to be free from the office really I think if you work in a particular job the criticism I have of it is it doesn't apply to everyone does yeah. it really you know it, Ultimately, if your work requires you to do something, to actually physically do something, mm. you can't get that done any quicker unless you... Mm. If it's a simple task, like serving someone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you can't compress serving, you know... Like a chef. Yeah. Exactly. So you can't cook the food faster, yeah, can yeah. you? Yeah. So, like, you can't, you can't cook five days of meals in four days, can you, yeah, if you're a chef? Because exactly. you physically can't make that a faster process. Yeah, exactly. Unless you come up with some amazing new technology, Unless it's technology. Like, like the birth yeah. of the microwave. Yeah, but then you need. Yeah, so the, there will be something where they can, but it, that, that's probably as a good example it's as we can topic, think of. Isn't it really? Yeah. Just because you know, a chef, you know, stops working his normal five day week to a four day week doesn't mean it's going to be more productive, yeah. and it, it's not. That's not going to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's just more. Um, it, it's very specific types of jobs. I mm. think, yeah, especially ones to do with the creativity and maybe problem solving. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. But specifically with that, I think, because mm. that I mean, as people who've worked as developers, there's some days where you go in, and we've said this before, haven't we? Like, uh, if you've got a problem with a bit bit of code that you're yeah. working on, you might find that just a decent night's sleep yeah. and looking at it with a fresh pair of eyes in the morning yeah. does more than sort of hammering your head against it. But does more than yeah. working an extra three hours or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's definitely room there to boost your productivity I think well that's uh, one company recently did it didn't they in uh, I don't know which country it was I think it was Microsoft did it in Japan maybe mm. um, where they reduced the four hour four day a week for a, two months or a month and they reported they increased productivity massively and of course that's what I think the political bandwagoning has been sort of springboarded from is that Microsoft report mm. because it's there and everyone goes oh we can do that for ev everyone but again mm. this it's a particular field in technology yeah. where you may, may be able to see those returns because of the human element of it. Yeah. And actually yeah. they're probably the industries where the staff are not under as much pressure mm. and are probably better paid mm. anyway yeah, so they will that be, would yeah. benefit yeah. from yeah. this kind of mm. uh, you know, initiative because you know, like, if we get, we get, you know, let's go to the basics. The low paid McDonald's Burger yeah. King yeah. worker yeah. 
is they could already be working four they, days. They they, they can, yeah, yeah you know they're on they're probably on less. shifts anyway and yeah, they'll yeah. earn less. Yeah. But they're not going to make more burgers by doing yeah. four yeah. days and to be five honest, days are they? So they're more likely to be re- and they are in the process of being replaced. Yeah. By the mm. self service yeah. machines. Is it really then an argument about this? It's not really about a four day week. It's no. more about overall gains in productivity means that the dream that we were sold in the 50s and 60s that technology would enable a sort of society of people not having to work mm. it hasn't really happened it's just enabled m- certain people to make a lot more money yeah mm. it's passing on yeah. it, I suppose the concept yeah, from the, par- the party that are wanting to do it their, their probable thing is not about productivity yeah, exactly. it's yeah. probably about the fact that they should be more sharing exactly. you should of the benefits sharing of yeah. the benefits of automation yeah, so yeah. that if you work in McDonald's yeah. and you've been replaced by one of those big mm. screens so you can pick your order well actually you should effectively mm. be able to get less hours in McDonald's and get some of the benefit by the fact that McDonald's have made more money by reducing yeah, exactly. the number of staff yeah. that yeah. they require yeah. Yeah. and rather than McDonald's making that extra yeah however many millions from not employing one extra person in every shop to be a, mm. a server that actually that means everyone who did what does work in mcdonald's can just work four days exactly. yeah. rather yeah. than losing a yeah. member of staff to, so, yeah. to the automation you, you get a 50 get a 30 boost in efficiency yeah then that means the staff get an uh, equivalent boost in wages and, yeah and everyone share you know what i mean yeah like, so mcdonald's would be necessarily optimizing for profit sake and that's the mind yeah. shareholder Whereas they could easily be saying, well, actually, yeah, well, everyone can have a better life yeah. underneath. And I think that's, that's I suppose, mm. where the concept's coming from. But there's only certain industries where yeah. that is possible. Yeah. Mm. But then, to be fair, they're saying everyone needs to have it applied across the board. Mm. And there'd be issues like McDonald's is a multi- multinational and it mm. can afford it. Other businesses, mm. like, like we've just done a mm. podcast about High Street, they're looking for any efficiency just to stay afloat. Exactly. If you try and say to them, you've got to you know cut your working week by 20 percent yeah it doesn't work you know, for that, bars, that's, does that's it? not going to happen yeah. is it no pubs close all the time don't yeah they? and if you enforce this there's there's no way yeah be able to, to yeah and how does going. it work when people are getting paid by the hour anyway yeah yeah, yeah. if well, you're on an it. hourly yeah. rate yeah and you do four hours unless we increase the hourly rate which yeah. supposes the equivalent increase everyone's yeah, you know, the the minimum wage by twenty percent. Exactly. That's what the argument's really about. You know, it? so then yeah. that's the equivalent, isn't it? You can yeah. work the same number of days for la- less number of days for the same amount of pay by just increasing the minimum wage. Mm. But does it really have the effect of but then changing it that way, or does yeah. it just have a knock-on effect that makes everything stay the same? Yeah, you know, that's, that's the problem. Because yeah. then you get relative changes, don't you? So mm. if everyone in, on the minimum wage goes, you know, yeah. it goes yeah. higher. Everyone who's kind of at that point where the minimum wage is going to go is well, I'm not in a minimum wage job. I want to pay right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, yeah. and then it knocks on like that. Yeah. And at some point, yeah. it never seems to come from the top, does it? And yeah. I think we're going to do a podcast yeah. later about you know the difference between billionaires and millionaires. Yeah. But it it never seems to take a hit there. It will always somehow squeeze the middle. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, and that's yeah. that's, that's very interesting. one of the issues with the four day week, especially like the SME like entrepreneurs and the you know the small business owners who may only have a few staff mm. to lose 20 percent of your mm. you know your working week when you've got no way of making that up through well, yeah, your productivity enough, efficiency I mean, so this yeah. is where i, th- I, th- when, I know, think the yeah. real the real benefit not the four day working week but but the real thing that should be driven is the flexible working instead yeah so i think uh, that's yeah, yeah. That's much more Actually, that's beneficial. Brilliant point, yeah. Because it's something that we've really embraced recently because um, we're, we're we're moving offices, aren't we? Yeah. And a couple of members of our staff, you know, we, we, we trust our staff mm. enough that we, you know we're fine. We trust them enough to employ them. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and to to work from home. Um, and the hours that suit them and their family life and yeah. things like that. And I think ultimately. They're all happier because they don't have to worry about like okay, you know, got to pick up the child child support, yeah. mm-hmm. um, got to you know oh, be home there. Oh, I can't see me kids play yeah. today or something like that. So it, it benefits are massive, yeah. but they can choose when they want to. I work. think that's a much more significant benefit actually, yeah. Rather, yeah, rather, rather than just like oh, a few less working hours. Because I don't. We've well, said this before. People don't necessarily dislike their jobs. I like doing. I like what I'm doing. So 
if I didn't have to do it, I would probably end up doing something similar anyway. Yeah. I'm a millionaire. I'd probably be like, oh, I'm still going to code. Yeah. Well, I always say that, actually. It's always the thing. Mm. is a discussion. What would you do if you won the lottery? I'd yeah. be like, oh, I'd probably go on a big holiday for a month. Yeah. And, then and then I'd come be back like, to it. <laughs> like, mm, well, yeah. Actually, I just want to... I'd be bored, yeah. 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 I'd, be yeah. Like, I'd, 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 be, I'd, I'd rather work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Stay with right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, if I'm in the middle of doing something, I don't want to be interrupted. No. I don't want to stop and go, oh. So it, but, but having the flexibility... Is, is, has way more value and I think yeah. for women as well we're saying it's more especially after childbirth I personally have noticed what's happened with my wife and with her career mm. and other people around my age that as soon as you have a family it can completely derail your life because suddenly your responsibility to get somewhere has changed massively it's not just yours for you to be somewhere because you've got an engagement mm. for pleasure it's literally oh I've got to get there and if there's conflict with your employer Leads to mass amounts of stress, and that can affect your performance. Yeah, yeah. So, so, and it's it's um, you as an employer would then become coming down to going. Well, do, do I want to choose someone who can't commit themselves fully to me, or um, and but they are very skilled, and then I've got to choose someone who can commit because simply because by then they don't have a family, but isn't as skilled. Mm. Who do I want? And who's going to be mm. like the best for me? And is actually going to be committed to me? Is it going to be the person who just can turn up because they need a job and they can just be there or is the person who's weak has gratitude the flexibility mm. and is now pulling in the same direction because they they feel like you know what I mean they're, they're being respected their and, match and with like them. you're part of like a, people who underst- you know an understanding team rather than just doing it for you yeah. you know what I'm saying like that has so much more value I think that's probably yeah. you know we have the wrong metric in this country don't we no. we talk about like hours that people work exactly. or yeah. like yeah. you know being you know clocking in and yeah. clocking out and yeah. even flexi time is like flexi time not exactly. flexi productivity yeah. and also you're you not know, really measuring so someone's commitment to your business you can't yeah. measure that by yeah. the number of hours they've done yeah you know yeah. like you can measure it by your seeing their commitments and like how, how intended they are and how they think about the job at hand do you know what I mean yeah. so it, like you talked about the interview that your um, girlfriend went on where she talked about problems she'd solved yeah. now the, so- the problems that she'd solved were indicative of her commitment to thinking about the company and like problem solving in general yeah. and not just like I'm a clock puncher coming in exactly. I used to work in a factory where I saw a guy who'd been working in the factory for 30 years who would stand at the um, punch out thing which was, had, it was a hand print recognition mm-hmm. machine and he would stand there five minutes watching the time waiting for it to go to exactly five o'clock before he put his hand in Mm. punch out Got I remember thinking like that, sure. yeah I was thinking, thinking he's counting every minute of every day oh my literally he has to go home. literally you know and it, it was like I don't want to be in a job where no. m- m- I'm wishing away my life yeah. so I can get up home for mm. two hours no I think, yeah. I think they're the people who this whole yeah. thing is, is is geared to isn't it you hate your job mm. imagine if you only had to do four days yeah, rather exactly. than five yeah. but imagine always, loving your job yeah that's that's you know imagine actually we made the whole work environment yeah. much better so you actually wanted to be there yeah. you know you were more productive exactly. and because you were more productive yeah. the company could afford to pay you more yeah. I but think that that, that to me seems to be the yeah. you know and that I don't know that's only in this country that we seem to have this issue with work because it it doesn't seem to be the same in other countries I mean America seems to have a very different work ethic yeah. about like they don't even take their holidays that they're entitled to yeah, yeah, yeah. and that like yeah. but then on the other hand you've got Germany where yeah. unions and management work together to, for the good of the company because yeah. they know it's mutually beneficial mm-hmm. that if the company does well yeah. it doesn't close down that's progressive so then progressive, you, know, yeah. you know whereas our yeah. country seems to be oh how can we get to the pub early on a Friday <laughs> I is, think we have a general problem discussing yeah. uh mental states and our emotions in general yeah. like there's certain cultures that are very good That's and we discussed about and, and I think true. talking about what your wants and needs are British people are more like to say whatever you want well, yeah. whatever you need it's yeah. fine and then if as an employer you're going what do you want and you go oh uh, I, I'm fine I'll, I'll uh, yeah I'll work late don't worry That's yeah. what they, like we're very much putting ourselves out and whereas other cultures are much more not that they're less selfless but they're much more open about how they actually feel about yeah. it and when those and in Germany I've, I've you know, they're probably much better at discussing those things openly and having that two-way conversation. I'm not sure. I'm not stereotyping. I'm drawing you into yeah. a trap there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, I don't know. It just probably just depends on the power balance as well. Yeah. When, when there's an overarching corporate power, then really what they say goes as it is in America. Yeah. And uh, I guess after the Second World War, Germany, they kind of became a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. yeah more so. Okay. Yeah. But it's an interesting topic. Yeah. I think you know it's certainly something where if you are in a you know a service industry, uh, you know somewhat like an office based mm-hmm. job, there is options to make up those days, but. We'll have to see how this one pans out yeah. for other industries and whether the um, the people at the top want to take the cut yeah. of after they have the benefits of automation yeah, exactly. in order to yeah. allow people yeah. at the bottom to to take that extra day off or have more flexible working, yeah. etc. Oh, well. I think your 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 uh, <laughs> your uh, outburst <laughs> says it all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. my my face. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks for listening to the Swift Case Productivity Podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, please drop a comment in the comments below about uh, the four-day working week and what your thoughts are. And I know um, during my three-day weekend, I'd probably spend you know some time going out, seeing some friends, coming home afterwards, going online, and going to swiftcase.co.uk <laughs> and to see some of the things that we do. And don't forget to check us out on social media as well at mm-hmm. Swift Case UK. Yeah, and if you want to see or hear more of this kind of thing, uh, don't forget to subscribe by clicking the little bell icon below. Okay, thanks everyone for listening, and we'll see you again next time.